Today's build guide is a particular build that uses the Demonic Curse Staff. The purpose of the build that you see on your right is to deal damage while kiting because the mobility of a Curse Staff is not always the best. However, with this kiting strategy, we should have enough kill potential to kite out melee and secure victories while not having the best mobility. To go over the skills really quick, I am using the Curse Sickle. Now, some of you, if you haven't seen the latest patch, would be, why would you use that? Why would you ever use Vile Curse, for instance? Well, last patch, Vile Curse got nerfed. Its cooldown went from 2 seconds to 2.4 seconds. And the Curse Sickle got buffed by the speed in which it projectiles out to a damage people, making it a really good long-range poke option that also applies a Vile Curse. So this is perfect for having a fight where you're kiting people out. Secondarily, we're using Desecrate, which is a crowd control effect that roots people in place. Uh, this is also good for kiting to stop an assailant in their tracks, to reposition yourself, and it also applies a vile curse charge. And last but not least, we have Anguish Soul. This is a soul or a ghost that goes out passing through enemies dealing big damage and it fears the enemies based on the amount of vile curse charges. This actually got buffed recently. Let's say you had four vile charges on. It used to be that if you popped your E after it feared them for two seconds, you would have no charges left. However, they buffed it so that this only consumes two vile curse charges. So let's say you had four charges, you cast this, you're still hurting them with your other vile curses because you have two charges left. Not as devastating as it used to be because it was overpowered before they nerfed it, but now it's, I think it's at a good place where you can use it as a feasible option. The other elements of this build may look familiar to you because this, this is pretty much the same type of armor that I used with a war bow. We had a cowl of purity instead. Now we have a fiend cowl, which at the end of the day, both of those items are being used to have this as the default skill, which is the knockback force field. Again, the playstyle we're trying to create here is a curse staff that can kite so my thought is if i can knock them back while i kite them that'll give me more options to deal damage while they cannot deal damage of course this is an important item the ambush for repositioning away from an assailant it also could increase your damage exponentially right before you're about to cast your e or any other damaging ability so you can use this you know offensively and defensively i highly recommend using it defensively especially while kiting then last but not least these boots i'm just using because they're very good in terms of the healing potential that they have and the defense. And last but not least, the Thetford Cape allows for consistent damage while kiting every time you do an auto attack. Also, similarly to the Warbow, we are using the same food for energy cost uh, reduction, and we're also using our healing potions. And there you have it. Those are the skills that you would use. Again, think about the gameplay of this like a Warbow. Whether you played Warbow before or you fought a Warbow, you know that their mission is kiting. That is the mission of this build as well. So when I engage someone, I am I am never sprinting towards them or very rarely sprinting towards them simply because we always need to be kiting and then when he's really low on health then we can decide if we want to go in for the kill or not. You got to be very careful with this build. You don't want to be caught because mobility is an issue. It is now even more worth to do your missed activities out of the city of Bresselin. Not only do you have instant access through this portal here that you could choose a non-lethal, lethal or duo miss, but now you actually have something you could spend your favor on other than and Conqueror's Challenge Chest. A new vendor is now found in Bresselin. This vendor here has introduced both new mounts as well as new capes into the world of Albion. And this is the vendor here in Bresselin and you could spend your favor rewards to get an assortment of different items depending on what your goal is. So far, I've just been uh, purchasing Fairy Fire and selling it immediately. It feels like almost like I'm buying the faction hearts while when I do this. But right now, Fairy Fire is in very high demand. I'm sure the the Mystic Owls and the Elite Mystic Owls will also probably be pretty good, but I think uh, the biggest one is probably the Fairy Fire. Right now is what I'm using to make the most money. To get to Bresselin, earn your 50,000 Bresselin standing through doing Mist activities, then continually search for the Bresselin portal by going in and out of Mists until you see it appear on your map. But yes, without further ado, let us go in, see how this build fares. As always, if you did not eat your food prior to entering the Mist, make sure that you eat your food as soon as you realize you don't have it it could be the difference between life and death. So the demonic staff for PvE, especially when you're using your PvP skills, uh, is actually not terrible. However, it's not the greatest either. So you do have to be careful, especially uh, if you want to retain your abilities for PvP. Using your Q and E is fine in PvE. Save your root in case you need it to get away. As with uh, any cutting playstyle, you do want to keep your mount near you kind of at all times. You could certainly walk through certain areas if you wanted to, but your lack of mobility is 
is probably better when you have your mount near you. I do believe we just saw a name tag. Yes, we did. Okay, let's see who this is. This is actually a possible fight that we could take if this individual is interested. I don't think he would be, but if he is, I would be interested. So if he's the if he's the one we saw, we're not too too worried about him. But we'll just we'll just carefully farm here, just clear this out. This is the largest of the outposts in the zone, and there's usually a decent amount of people that may be here. Remember, don't do what I just did. I just used my Desecrate on those mobs. I should have saved it for if somebody was coming. There's another person down there. Same guy as before. He's the Axe guy. Like I said, I'm willing to give it a shot against the Axe guy. Uh, the reason why the Axe individual there may have been a good fight for us is that our Desecrate, I believe, will be able to root him in place when he casts his E. His E can go through just about everything, right? It can go through a firewall. It can go through a wind wall. But it can be rooted in place pretty much allowing it to be useless. So with our Desecrate alone, it would be very useful. If he was spinning and we casted our E, however, he would have not been affected by the fear because he could have just gone straight through it with the spinning. So just know, axes are fairly good combatants for us to take. Battle axes are pretty difficult though. It might be a tough one to go after that, but a great axe is not bad at all. All right, so now the outpost is completed. Let us see where the chest is. Are you at? Oh, okay. We got somebody right here. Oh, okay. We got we got a fight maybe. Okay. What the hell is going on here? Be cutting. Hey, there we go. That X guy comes over here now. I'm not going to be a happy camper, but so let's just get out of here real fast. And that is how you fight a battle axe, I guess. <laughs> so um, let's go over that fight a little bit. So we saw he was in the middle of a fight in the outpost we were in. And so we went outside to see if we can, you know, force a fight. We didn't dismount on top of him because then he would have had the upper hand on us. We wanted to dismount for far enough away so that he would have to, you know, use some sort of skill to catch up. Luckily, uh, we were able to uh, entice him to fight us. We used our sickle appropriately, we rooted appropriately, and we were able to dodge one of his two axe throws, which was also helpful. Uh, so overall, I think we did well to kite him. He was lower IP than us, so we'll give him credit because he did do well. Uh, but uh, we were able to eliminate the threat and not have to worry about it. But that is, that's the type of fight that we want. Uh, we want to have those and see if we can continue to have some of those. Hmm. This guy's kind of scary, honestly. He's down to fight, I am. What's this? Oof, that, that hurt him bad. Okay, there we go. Started kiting and then, uh, you know, the fight just came to us. We were able to hit them both, AOE with the sickle, rooted them both, feared them both. That was, that was perfect. That was perfect. That's how you do a, uh, you know, 2v1 scenario. I was kind of surprised myself on that one as well, but hey, that's, uh, that is what it is. That is a curse staff. It really is nice to have the AOE 
vile curse stacking both on the curse sickle as well as the desecrate each person got a vile curse when i desecrated them and rooted them into place and then of course both people were getting hit with my sickle causing massive damage over time and a wonderful start to this build guide <clears throat> so yeah oh okay there we go got ourselves a uh, little portal here uh if you are if you have not heard of the last major patch called nightfall uh, it is the introduction of a roguelite like dungeon where you can receive buffs that you can be using to fight uh, off other mobs or other enemies other players and it's pretty a, a unique experience the map is large you start off at some random corner where other players are also spawning throughout the map and you simply clear the mobs to receive a buff of the chosen variety so the roses is the compassion buff it could also be a chest other than the buff but usually if you see roses it's compassion you see scales it is justice and if you see a sword it is valor those are the three types of buffs you can get in here and so you clear an area it opens up and there you go compassion or yes blessing of compassion it gives you a heal and you can heal over five seconds as well we'll take it now this is interesting to know because of this mechanic in here uh you may be able and you should play around it knowing that you have a buff that lasts for five minutes you could plan around it so if your build is more of a kiting build perhaps the one to get would be justice simply because justice gives you move speed at the end of you know when your health reaches below 40 percent so i i think for me in this build i would love the movement speed in fact i think most builds would just benefit from movement speed all together even if not to catch your your assailant but to uh you know escape from an assailant as well but again that is that's all based on your type of build the, the play style you're using but for a kiting play style i tend to like the justice buff for the movement speed all right and here's the valor buff this one uh, gains 70 percent max health and current health for five seconds when you get below 40 percent health that's not bad if you're a turret build who wants to stand and fight and just deal damage that's kind of like the hey just you're beefy just continue to continue to fight you'll be okay that's that's kind of the the mindset there at least for me so i would think of like a bow or a whispering bow or just like something that just is a turret perhaps um fire staff using artillery or just fire staffs in general that would probably work well it's kind of like a last stand measure Another thing to note about the Nightfall Abbey is how narrow things are and how many exits there are. So if you're not, if you don't know where you're going, you could find yourself getting into a dead end where mobs are. And, you know, if you're being chased by a, another player, you'll probably die. That's, that's happened to me before. So number one thing to know, make sure you know where the exits are to the rooms. Have a bit of a strategy involved and locate the nearest exit so that if you do get in trouble, you can decide, okay, if I get in trouble, I go north because I know where the exit is. So again, if we're going to contest this, we need to know that there's an exit right here. So we're literally just going to run up and go there if we have an issue with somebody at the chest and we don't want to fight it. That'll be our exit strategy. Make sure you make one of those. It'll save your life multiple times. Who is this? The really shitty rat. What are you doing? Oh, this other guy coming. Fuck you, dude. Nice try. <laughs> All right. That guy was unfortunately under geared, but he was, you know, I, I wasn't going to try to kill him until he was trying to mess with me. Ah, oh, you're so lucky, dude. Nope. 
Yes, that hit him. He might be going down. Ah, oh, get him. Yes, there we go, you little shit. That's what you get, bro. Had to get me twice in a row? Woo! I like that. So let's go over that fight there. So I kind of knew that I countered that guy pretty much at every turn, right? I had a root, I had a knockback, I had an invis. So I was playing dangerous against those mobs. I don't recommend doing what I do unless you're a little bit more experienced, but I was baiting somewhat. And so what we ended up doing there is we actually nicked him in the, in, in the right places. We invised at the right time when he came in to, to use his ultimate. We knocked him back as well. We used our fear effectively for him to just get, you know, huge damage. So yeah, it was overall a good, uh, a good engagement there. He was lower IP, so I mean, you can't be, you can't take too much stock in that. But he did have a couple of things that were good for him. He was, he was cleansing my dots. So whenever you see somebody with a guardian helmet, you know, make sure you understand that he can cleanse all of your dots. That's that's kind of a counter to us as as curse staffs. It's not a full counter. We could still just dot him up again, but like it, it definitely stops a big chunk of our damage going through, and it could it could allow them to mount up as well. Yeah, it's it's not something we like. Doesn't mean we shouldn't fight it. It just means that they have that ability that we need to be careful of. So it's a great great curse. Ooh, he fucking hurt me there. I think he might be dead. I think he's dead either way, maybe. Yep, later. Got him, dude. That was huge. Did you see that shit? 700k kill, boys. Holy shnikes! What does this guy have? Oh my god, this guy was 6.3. Yo, dude. Yo! This build is fucking phenomenal, dude. Holy smokies. Fucking easy, bro. Demonic is back. Maybe Demonic never left. We left it. We have to we have to leave room for the possibility that you know demonic you know didn't leave us. We left it. <laughs> this is dude against other curse staffs without who don't use the curse sickle, it's just dominating. Yo, that's crazy. Okay, so let's go over what happened there at that fight. So he was a uh, great curse staff, I am the demonic staff. He was using vile curse. When we fight other curse staffs, if they're using Vile Curse and we're using Curse Sickle, advantage us. Uh, it's an advantage to us for sure. So we started out with a decent advantage there, and pretty much we just kind of kept kept playing it cool, trying to stay away from his stuff, rooting him when he was coming in, you know, with his sprints and stuff. We we kind of countered the shit out of him. Let's be honest. 
And uh, yeah, that's how you do it, boys. That's how you kite anybody. You can do that to anybody, pretty much. Uh, might be harder on against a double blade, maybe against Death Giver. Might be tough to get away, but I still think it's possible. At the end of the day, that was actually a very, uh, a very nice uh, little altercation. The fiend cow. What does he have? Yeah, that could be devastating. Fuck! All right, let's do it, big boy. Let's see what you got. Oh, you don't wanna, you don't wanna play no ball, eh? You don't wanna play, yeah? Oh, oh, is this him? It is. Okay, that was huge, actually. It wasn't for you, dude. Fucking idiot. Fuck. Should have gone after the other guy, dude. That's all that was needed. I might be able to kill this idiot. Let me see. from up here. Oh, how did he get that much distance on me? Did he, does he have the Cursed Sickle now? No. I honestly had this guy, but fortunately it's a curve. Yeah, you're done now, bud. Maybe not. Kill him. Don't fucker. Don't fuck with me. It's mine. <laughs> I love this playstyle, actually, bro. I actually love this playstyle. I I feel dirty, but I love it. I'm sorry. This might be my new... I might need to max out Curse to 700, bro. This shit's fucking fun. Woo! Nice job. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about what happened there. So, it was a back and forth. Uh, that was a tricky one because we needed to be very careful with his Desecrate E combo. Because when he roots, he's trying to do his E, which gives him lifesteal. Plus, he's trying to use his Merc Jacket, which gives him lifesteal. So, he had double lifesteal on his E and his chest piece. 
if we get rooted, we basically die. So I tried to be very careful not to get rooted. And uh, luckily, that's pretty much what won it. I was able to out uh, out volley him because I had longer range. And uh, the fear definitely you know, helped a lot to kind of cause him to not not engage when he could have. So that's another example of how to kill another curse staff. Key thing to note is if they have curse sickle, then you should be scared. If they don't, then you should still be scared, but not as scared. You could win against Vile Curse if you're a curse. Another uh, another kiting job slash chase down completed. You might also get a kill. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I see something I like. Ah, oh, you little bastard. Over here. Do not take it. Do not take it, sir. He took it, didn't he? Wait. What in the hell are you doing? What in the hell are you doing? <laughs> what the hell is he doing, bro? I feel bad for this guy, but I mean... It's the way the cookie crumbles, I suppose. Oh. I'm not sure what that guy was doing though. He was not paying attention. That's what that's one thing he wasn't doing. Hi guys, Black Bolo here. Thanks so much for watching my latest video. If you like what you saw, please hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. I truly appreciate it. Thanks, bros, and I'll see you next time.